Oh, hey now. Hey now. <laughs> I Don't almost, dream it's over. I almost fell on my ass. This would have been a very different episode if I just fell and cracked my head on an amp or something right now. I feel like my mic is a little bit too low. <clears throat> what you do you think? Fix that. You think my mic is too low, Steve? It's lower than mine. I'm using the green line on the monitor to measure your mic position. Oh yeah, there is a green line on the monitor. That's the. Oh, people don't care about that. Let's talk about the topic, Steve. Oh, hi, hi everyone. I'm Ryan, <laughs> and I'm Steve, because you've been calling me that. So I guess that's what my <laughs> name is now. Uh, and this what, is what would you like your name to be? <laughs> and this is 60 Cycle Hum the Guitar, buying, selling, trading, money, fixing, working, reviewing, playing podcast. Yeah, I'm I was turned down a little bit there, wasn't I? You were I? glad I fixed you. Yeah, so, yeah. uh, definitely could not have corrected that in post. Yeah, I, I, I'm still going to have to, I know. <laughs> but it's easier to fix it here. All right, Joelle Brodeur. Did I say your last name right? No, probably not. But, well, how would you read her last name? Oh, maybe I maybe you did, bro. Doer, uh, how will this economy affect the gear industry with people spending less? Will the market be flooded with used gear from people trying to offload stuff? We are slash were in a golden age of good quality, affordable stuff, and seeing a ton of really cool pedals that are a bit on the pricey side of the scale. I think this is an interesting topic right now because I've been seeing articles pop up on the internet and it's, it's it's probably just one article being shared mm-hmm. <laughs> everywhere but apparently like now is a really good time to buy rolexes like use rolexes because all the bitcoin bros that are down in the dumps are having to sell possessions to make ends meet where where are you where, what websites what's the best website to buy used rolex on i i have no idea i imagined that you went to like a jewelry shop or like a pawn shop but i guess you could probably do ebay there's probably there's got to be like a stock x there has to be a market. reverb equivalent that is yeah. that is for like wa- time pieces watches. for yeah. watches time pieces yeah time pieces. a rolex isn't a watch right it's a time piece <laughs> it's not just a time piece it's, Steve. A, it's a precision time piece. it's not a watch it's a chronograph <laughs> Gosh, we probably have people in the audience who are watch nerds who are like, oh man, they're screwing this all up. They don't know what they're talking about. But the, well, I, I mean, kind of, I'm asking because I kind of want to buy a Rolex now. Do you want to buy a Rolex now as like an investment? I don't know. It depends on how much it's going to cost me. I wonder if they are good investments or if it's like a, more of a flex. I don't want one as an investment. I'm going to wear, I'm like once we get settled in and I start playing like adult softball again, that's the only oh time I'm going to wear it. Just to, it just to flex on your on your softball friends. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, let me see what time it is, guys. Are hmm. you wearing a Rolex to softball? Yeah, usually I wear a Fitbit, but for softball, I break out the Rolex. You could be wearing a Rolex right now, sitting next to me, and I would have no idea. I w- it wouldn't. I'd be like, I, uh, I wouldn't even notice that you're wearing a watch. I always thought like the I, the only thing I know about watches is I remember like Omega used to run commercials all the time. Mm-hmm. That's kind of all I know about watches. I stopped wearing a watch the moment I got a smartphone. Not not even a smartphone. The moment I got you know like the the old you know Nokia that I used to have. I was like, right. well, this is my clock now. I don't need yeah. a watch anymore. And watches are purely for. Is this a watch podcast? I know. I only wear watches. I only wear like smartwatch. This smartwatch. If we were a watch podcast, look at all these steps. I'm what hearing. would our what would our name be? <laughs> the it watch, could, the watch watchers. It could still be 60, who watches the watch watchers. It could still be sixty cycle hum. That that would be sixty second. Oh, it could be sixty second hum. Yeah, but why the hum? It would be sixty second uh, clips ticks. I don't know. Sixty uh. sixty second fun. It'd be a fun watch podcast. We we would be able to call we would our cha- fans. We would change our name every week based on the based on the length of the show. There could be like infinite versions of what we do of people like, oh yeah, I just like scrap metal, so I've got a scrap metal podcast, and we go look at Craigslist ads for scrap metal. Yeah, like this this yeah. concept can be stamped jo- out. Joel's question, dozens of Joel's times. question could be. 
uh, what do you think is going to happen to the scrap metal market in this economy? Right, right. Are we going to see copper prices go through the roof again <laughs> as people start ripping copper Are people out start, of city park light posts you know, in order to make the ends meet? Offloading all these luxurious alloys they bought during during the pandemic, you know? <laughs> No, yeah, it would be, it would honestly be people like, oh, during the pandemic, I got into welding. And I have this whole welding rig I need to offload, you know? Instead of this sound, it would be, uh, if it was a scrap metal podcast, instead of the ka it would be, I love gold. Now, if we called our podcast scrap metal, it could be about scrap metal, but it also could still be about music. Ooh. Yeah. Scrap metal is my new subgenre of metal. <laughs> <laughs> I just need to find two other bands and we need to make a specific style of logo and it's a genre, right? Scrap metal. Is that how it works? Scrap metal sounds like you're, it's kind of like um, uh, Radiohead, but instead of right. being Radiohead, it's like, what? Didn't, didn't Chris Hardwick or it could also mean do scrap what, where he's metal, doing metal? As in like, like fight metal. Like, oh, we're going to scrap. Oh. We are so off topic. Will we ever find our way back? Steve, do you think the gear bubble is about to burst and people are going to start off offloading stuff at ridiculously low prices to make ends meet. I don't know. I, I think it's going to be really dependent on where you live. Mm -hmm. I certainly haven't seen it here. I, I Granted, I haven't been looking super hard. I mean, that, that guy who's been trying to sell the same 10 crappy guitars up in Escondido on Craigslist for 10 years is still trying to sell the same guitar. So he's not lowering his prices. Yeah, yeah. He is not in a hurry to sell those cars. <laughs> He's like, don't worry, I can wait. At this point, I I wonder if he's just got a, like a bot running to keep his ad going, and he forgot about it years ago. He actually sold them all, but they're, they, he just keeps renewing the listing. Right, right. Um, it's like his good luck charm to I've have been, that listing I've running. I've been watching listings up where I live, and uh, yeah, I don't. Oh, the prices all look normal. What's it like up there? What's the scene like? It's now that you're smaller. Well, yeah. I think the price is, I, I did see a, um, I almost I kind of like part of me wanted to buy it. The problem is I have no idea of how to even know if it's good or like in good shape or not, mm -hmm. but it was a, um, a Kai professional was the, was the make. Um, it was one of their drum machines, Ah, but the problem it's like a MIDI, it's like a MIDI drum machine. So I don't right. even know, like. Can you just plug? You're still thinking about hanging out with those DJ I boys. I was like, do you just? <laughs> well, the thing is, is it was listed for like 250 bucks. And I think those things are like six or seven hundred bucks new. Mm. So I was looking, and I'm like, is this a is this flippable? And I think it could have been flippable, but the problem is, it's so far out of like my comfort zone where it's like, I would just buy it and then put it on like reverb and be like, good luck. Right. Right. But it looked like it was in good shape. Maybe it's still there. Maybe I can find it again and lowball that guy. Sweetwater has a reverb alternative now. Yeah. Apparently, I, I want to I want to try to sell something on it just to see what happens. Apparently, they've had it for a while. I think they've been they've been but testing they're it. Like, they're like pushing it. They're like pushing it harder now. I kind of wonder if most of the listings on there are from them from their like if they've been compiling a big use thing to just have stuff in there when they launch it well you they're know? all like local they're all not local some of the some of the things okay. are like local but if you go and just look through because it, it says where it's located and a lot of them are like new york or florida or whatever they're all over the place Oh, anyway, it's I want to I want to sell something on it. I I, I asked some questions. I asked, yeah. yeah, we we are able to talk to people behind the scenes. That, and I, I instead of trying to do the research myself, I bugged them and wasted 10 minutes of their life today. But I was like, what's the deal with this? Like, what are the percentages? What are, you know, some some details that I'd want to know for, you know, running our channel and stuff yeah. like that. And it sounds like they're they're just slightly below reverb. Yeah, it's like point their their rate is two and a half. But I wonder percent instead of two point seven because reverb catches that adds up. Reverb catches you with other stuff like PayPal fees and things like that. Mm -hmm. Like I wonder if you can skip payment fees with Sweetwater. But the exciting thing, the exciting thing that I'm thinking about mm -hmm. is, and I think a lot of people will be interested in, which is why I'm talking about it. Uh, if if you want to, when you sell something on there, you can decide not to take the payment. As cash and lose that percent. It's like seven and a half percent right. or something like that after, you know, taxes and fees or whatever. You can decide instead to take the full amount 
no fees subtracted as Sweetwater credit. Hmm. So if you're trying to sell something, but you already know, if I have the money in my pocket, I'm going to buy, you know, like a Tone Master Twin Reverb or something like that. Like, you know how much it is. You're trying to sell something. Like, yeah, I'll just take the credit and then I won't lose my 7.5%. Like, I think that's, if that catches on, I think Sweetwater's going to have something. Now, the question I guess I would have is, can you use re- Sweetwater store credit in the, the use that, shop? In that use shop. That's an interesting question. Because then it turns into like a real like flip, flipperoony scenario. Yeah. Where you're uh, you're at least like that because like if you're selling a piece of your own used gear oh, and then you're buying kind of I kind of hope the used mark uh, the used bubble burst now because I want to take advantage of this. You know, and then you're buying a piece of new gear. Right. You are taking that like you're kind of taking that, you know, drove it off the lot. That, so say I, that I sell ding. my I sell my SG, and yeah. th- but there's like a sweet Depento on there. Yeah, you know, it's like, can I take my used money, my used credit, and apply it to another used instrument? Because Sweetwater's handling all the money for everyone, right? They're the in between. So why wouldn't you be able to use it? Like I could turn that SG into a Depento, you know. I, this idea. is all speculative. I haven't even has, looked to see if they got to do with the topic. There. Have you? Have you? Do you do much? Uh, it kind of has something to do with the topic. We're talking about the used market yeah. here. Do you do much uh, Craigslist besides looking for ads for the show? Uh, yeah, what? Well, I still, I still cruise Craigslist every day. <laughs> I, I, I probably <laughs> I, while I'm doing it, I'm sitting and looking at everything and scrolling through and thinking like, in my professional position I'm in now. If I want something, I can just ask for it. And probably 80% of the time, I'll probably get it, which shows like the self-restraint I have that I don't have a lot of like, but I mean, really crazy things because I could, I could honestly just ask for a lot of stuff. Right. right now. But the other side of that is, you know, I have to store it the whole. Yeah. If you want like, oh, you know, I've always been interested in a boss blues driver. Right. Like, yeah, sure. You can skip Craigslist for that and just, you know, reach out to whoever. But the other side of that is like, uh, you're not gonna. You're not. Gonna, I'm not gonna beg for you're a not, Depento. You're not. You're not gonna beg for a Depento. You're not gonna call up Sweetwater and be like, uh, "Hey, can you guys send me a 1968 right. Yamaha Samurai?" Like, right. That's not gonna be. Yeah. In no. Their, I you could, know you got a Craigslist. I could turn my used stuff into other my used stuff. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I could do it with technically, technically without losing money. Well, you if lose- I'm converting it to store credit and Sweetwater has something that I want, you know? At, and some, I, at some point in the chain, you're going to lose shipping. Right. But that's still pretty sweet. <laughs> like, when you think about it, I kind of wonder if that won't last forever. They'll have to be at some point like, oh, we can, we can you know, we still have to take a 2% fee to, like, mm-hmm. Cover operating costs of a website, you know, like that stuff costs money. They have, they've got a webmaster, guys. They've got to pay the webmaster. Sorry to the folks at home who are watching me pick carne asada out of my teeth. Now they want some. Now that they know what it is, yeah. Um. So do you th- go and trying to do the topic again, Steve? Do you think the used uh, bubbles gonna crash? People are gonna have to start because for a while the the bubble was was tight and taut right, right. and inflated and people were selling things uh it was like the housing market like things things are or like the used car market where things are selling above new mm-hmm. sometimes because the the new things weren't available you mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. or you just couldn't find them anymore and so people are paying more just to get a guitar just to get a guitar guys just to get that get that pedal like what okay I'm going to name a thing that I think would be an indicator of the used bubble bursting. And then, the you, and then you counter with another a, indicator. A daily podcast by Planet Money. <laughs> Is it really? Yeah. Uh, the king of tone bubble bursts. It's not going to burst. Yeah, but like, not burst burst, but like what if it was like, oh, these were 700 last week and now, right. now people are buying them for 550. You know, like they're still above new. Mm-hmm. I think they're going to remain above new, but maybe people will reevaluate and be like, you know what? Mm-hmm. I can't wait three years. It's, you know, it's a blues driver, right? Or is it whatever, whatever, what is it? It's not a blues driver. It's, um, no, it's a, it's a blues breaker. Blues breaker. I think. Right. <laughs> or P or like 
finally, <laughs> finally, people, someone will be like, you know what? I'm not going to pay the new highest price ever for a clon. And all of a sudden right. we'll start, start seeing clons start going backwards. You just named my thing. So. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, it was obvious. It was right there on yeah. the table. Yeah. Maybe whammies. Whammies? Are Whammy whammies up? coming down? Yeah. Yeah. Because well because, because Digitech, Digitech kind of, yeah. like doesn't exactly exist. They kind of, they exist, but like and no one really knows what they're doing. Rage Against the Machine is having Yeah, they, they're they're coming back. A, a, a moment? Yeah. But I I'm not seeing that moment's not like huge right now, but it feels like it it could lead that way if they decide to keep doing it. I if Rage Against the Machine drops a new album, mm-hmm. that will be the test of whether or not they're having a real moment. Like playing some shows, you know, that's, that is what it is. Maybe we'll be like, this is fun. We should do this again sometime. But if they dropped a hot new song and people like, yeah, now we're ready to fight the powers that be. That's a, a I know that's a different band, different band. Yeah. That's public enemy, right? Yeah. (laughs) Fight the power, fight Fight the powers that be. That's it. That's all I know. I mean, to be, I mean, to be fair though, Rage Against Machine is, you know, like they owe a lot to public enemy. Yeah. Rage Against the Machine. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> That's how I feel in the moment too. No, I was gonna say something real awkward. But if they have a moment, then we're gonna see Whammy's skyrocket if there's not enough yeah. new ones yeah. available. I think uh I think the real indicator is the to me would actually be uh if Mexican strap prices start dropping. That is the in- that's you know, that's like pork bellies. Yeah. Mexican stress. I mean, we've said this since the beginning of the podcast, eight and a half years now. Yeah. Mexican strats. The resale on Mexican strats tells you a lot about the used gear economy, where we're at, where things are going. And new Mexican strats have been climbing up in value. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming used Mexican strats have been climbing up in value as well. Yeah. Look, but but the current ones are, but like if I was going to go buy a 98, Made in Mexico Strat is that up in value or is that still four hundred bucks? I mean, it but they were four hundred bucks new. But I'm, but like they've kept up with like I'm saying like they've inflated. They're not like but everything's inflating, right? Right, right. I bought a Mexican Strat for like two hundred bucks, like ten oh, years yeah. ago. I bought all kinds of Mexican Strats back in the day that were like one eighty five, two seventy five. Yeah. I'm going to search for MIM Strat on Craigslist and see what comes up. I got a PRS first. What's that all about? Uh, Squire. They're, they're, they're feeding you on your algorithm. Search wider area. Let's do 200 miles. 96 made in Mexico Strat in Olympic white. It looks like it's in good condition. What's your guess, Steve? Uh, I need to see a picture. This is good podcasting right here. Um, Were you trying to look underneath my finger? No, no. So the issue is, what year did you say? 1995? 1996. 1990, so 1996, I think the Black Label strats were done. That was why I was asking is because the Black Label strats were like so, kind of like the Squire Mexico thing. Uh-huh. I would guess 450. Right on the fucking money steve <laughs> are you kidding me i didn't i swear i did not see under your finger <laughs> it's in really clean condition too i'm not even going to try to f- save pictures you guys aren't going to be able to see it but there's another one on here 600 580 for 2015 um yeah the 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 90s ones are like 400 to 500 in the and the ones that are the 2000 when they revamped it in 2009 so that newer era from like 2009 until I think when they introduced the player series in like, was it 2018? Yeah. They did the player series so I feel like, there. Like all of those are between 550 and 600. A, a late 90s Mexican strat going for 450 now, possibly 500, feels like it's on pace with the economy versus them being 200 to 300 uh, eight and a half years ago when we started the show. I mean, I think it's. Does that on, feel equivalent? I think it's on pace with everything going up, but like right now, in my brain, 
Can you imagine the bubble bursting on Mexican strats and them going back down to say 300 on the used market? I can't imagine it, but that's why I'm saying. A, you a, can't a, imagine it. I, I can cannot. imagine anything, Steve. Well, I'm not as, that's why you're a graphic <laughs> designer and I'm a scientist. Steve can't even imagine that it's too complex. Yeah. I could, I can't only imagine. <laughs> I could only imagine. Um, no, uh, the thing is, is like 10 years ago, if I saw a Mexican strap for $200, I'm like, I'm, I'm going to flip that. Right, right. I'm going to buy it and I'm going to clean it up and I'm going to put it back up for 350 And then take I'm 300 take the first offer over 300 Right, right. But right now at 450 like I'm like, that's, that's a lot of money. That's squire money, though, that's man. Eight, that's eighty percent of that, an HX stomp. That's che- that's cheaper than some squires right now. No, new squires, and I you could know. get a Mexican strat instead. I know in my heart and in my head that current squires are better than that nineteen ninety seven strat is going to be in a few different ways. The pickups are going to be better. The bridge hardware is going to be better. I think the fret I mean, dressing cla- is going to be better. The classic vibe Stratocaster. Before they dropped the price, because remember, Fender just dropped all their prices. I don't think prices. the wood would be better, but I think the paint uh, would be better. The classic vibe Strat right now at Sweetwater, <laughs> click the link below, <laughs> uh, it was $419.99, which is to say, very nice price. It's a nice price. It's a it's nice, nice price. price. Um, this would be a great video idea to go buy a really good condition late 90s Mexican Strat and then mm-hmm. get the squ- the new squire like representation of that model as close as you can get it like a standard strat maybe even similar color like like same pickups like single coil pickups uh and then compare them and be like what's better a current squire mm-hmm. or a 90s mexican fender i think that would be a compelling video what do you guys think should I make it? Should I spend money to make it? Should I spend Patreon money to make that happen? <laughs> and just do like do I'm the, looking do, around to see if you have a current Squire. Do the no. I'd have to get the Squire. You, you just buy it. I'd you have to buy get it. it all. Yeah, or buy get it, it all. get it sourced or whatever. Um, but do the do like my Affordus Strat worksheet where it's like compare the frets, mm. compare. Mm. The neck shape, compare the nut, compare the tuners, compare the pickups, compare the hardware, and just go through and score them and figure out which one's better. I really think that in the 90s, I've heard different speculations, like different theories on this. People who tuned in for the main topic, because I'm going to clickbait the hell out of it, are so confused right now because we've changed topics 20 Um, times. I think the, the Mexican Strat in the 90s was made for like either hot blues or like pop punk or something. They're like, we're just going to put the hottest, cheapest pickups we can find in this thing. You know what? Ceramic pickups were a somewhat desirable thing in the nineties as a way of like ceramic pickups. They're going to be high output to really push your distortion. Like everything was about distortion. And then everything shifted back and was like, Oh, we really want that Al Nico for that sweet like vintagey tone it's warmer it's yeah. warmer right i mean there's good ceramic pickups and there's bad and there's good al nico and there's it, bad. it's you know the whole thing about this that's tough generally al, me, i prefer al nico is, though i don't know if uh i guess i don't really know what's going on in the economy mm. at the end of the day i know like obviously we are we are officially in a recession and all this stuff, right? But the I, economy machine did the thing where it auto fire everyone. <laughs> what? No one's buying Brondo anymore. Oh my gosh. How are we going to fix the economy? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I just, I like, I don't know. Um, I don't know what that looks like in other places because here I. Well, one, like having just moved and but still working in San Diego, like I'm very focused on like reestablishing. Right. And uh, and then work and whatever. So I just I have no idea. I don't know how the- your view. No, I know. I know where you're at right now with that, that new home buyer feeling where it's like the rest of y'all don't matter anymore. Yeah, like, I, like, I have to make mortgage. That is like, that's what matters now. All I all I do is like I look at 
like I can't even figure out if I'm bleeding money right now. Right. Because I it's like because we had a nest egg you've that done we put so together many, for the house. So many big transactions and, and you don't know. No, exactly. Yeah. Like I was telling you earlier, again, unrelated to this is like, oh, I need to like buy a computer. Right. Well, I'm just gonna go do it and we'll figure out how to pay for it later. I don't Hope. know. Is that like Yeah. I realize that's See, like, what, I realize what, that's a position of privilege. And I'm just acknowledging that, like, I don't really have a finger on this. I would be interested in hearing from listeners, like, in the comments and stuff. Like, Steve if, doesn't want to talk about the economy. I do, I do. Well, I do know people who are selling things at, like, a very fast rate. Philip Carter, I don't know if he sold it yet from 40 Watt Podcast. He's selling his Stevis and Burke. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, I don't know if he sold it already or not. And when one of those goes on the market, you're not going to see those often. You want to yeah. jump on that right um, away because there's only 14 of them. But uh, I know he's selling a lot of stuff, but I also know, I think part of the reason he's got some things going on, but also I think he's like, I got to sell things so I can buy things. A right. Bit, so, I mean, you got to sell things so you have a place to put the new thing. Right. Like sometimes it's just about space. You so, know? so, I mean, there's a, people always have different motivations to sell things. Um, I'm at least at this point, not seeing a drop, but it would be interesting. I think it wouldn't be the worst thing if the economy slowed down. Or like drop just enough where people are like, oh, maybe I don't need 20 fireflies. Right. No, I think there's a lot. Like I don't. That could, be a, really, that could be a really weird indicator actually. It, oh, that is, could be the canary in the coal because, mine. Uh, because. When you start seeing fireflies uh, flood the market. Joel mentioned like, you know, what's uh, there's so many good cheap things available now. And so it kind of like leans itself like people. We're back uh, on topic. It's people amazing. who will. Uh, like the idea is like, well, man, Epiphone makes a really good guitar now, so I'm gonna I'm gonna buy you know sell my Gibson and I'm buying Epiphone and pocket the difference, right? But there's also those people who own you know a bunch of cheap guitars because they are kind of collecting them, and, and all of a sudden they're gonna maybe they'll be in a situation where they're like, I'm just gonna sell eight of my fifteen Fireflies. Now this is this is a little bit dark. But we are coming up on something in the near future where there's going to be an election, a lot of estate sale guitar things going on. Like, and there's also going to be like baby boomers that are aging out of their guitar hoarding. Right. They're like, I can't take all this stuff with, I'm downsizing my home. Cause I, you know, like I'm giving it to my kids or whatever. I'm moving to, to small, I'm going to hit the road with my RV or whatever, mm-hmm. or I'm just flat out. Like I can't play anymore. The arthritis caught up with me, you know, uh, all the way through to someone passing away and leaving behind a horde of guitars for their family to sort through. Right. That might be like e- economic stuff is one thing that might be the next big guitar market crash where a generation of people, a generation that embraced guitar on a level that we'll probably never see again Mm -hmm. starts fading out and starts moving gear and starts passing away. And we'll see all that stuff enter the market. All that age of people who were the high value, like collector's piece people, they're aging out of that. They're passing stuff on. It either stays in the family or people are reselling it to, you know, uh, you know, pay to go into a home or something like that. I'm not, I'm, I'm trying to keep this as respectful as I right. can. Like this is real life stuff. Like we both have aging parents. Like this is real stuff that we have to think about and things that are coming up My in the future. My parents aren't musicians, so I'm, I'm <laughs> in the clear. <laughs> if your parents are musicians, you're probably help ta- helping take care of them. <laughs> um. <laughs> No, I, I know what you mean. Um, and that will be a thing. I mean, it's always kind of been a thing, but there is definitely a, like a, a population there. We're on the cusp of a, of a population shift. Right. You know, um, in that regard. So that will and be. The generations coming up aren't going to value like those collector's pieces mm-hmm. the same because they weren't there. Yeah. It wasn't like, oh, I, yeah. I need to have, you know, a piece of, like, Jimmy's guitar or yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, someone's going to be like, oh, so buy they're my like, Eric Clapton signature Strat. And you're going to be like, who? They're, no, they're, they're going to know who it is, but it's like, oh, that has, uh, you know, an interesting historical connection. But it's, that's not the same connection as, 
Oh, I remember the first time I heard Clapton on the, my AM transistor right. radio, and then I went and saw him play. I drove for blah, blah, blah to see him at a festival. Mm -hmm. Like, that that sort of experience pays a much different price mm. for essentially antiques right. right? versus the person who's like, oh, this has some historical value to it. Mm -hmm. You know, that deep emotional connection to guitars, that cultural emotional connection to guitars, that's what drives the, you know, $10 million collector guitar sales, mm -hmm. you know? I don't know. We've, we've covered... 40 topics in this one topic <laughs> somehow. Should we do a sponsor spot? We should talk about housekeeping, housekeeping. and then we do a sponsor spot. Or we can do a spot. Let's do a sponsor spot first. All right. Uh, this episode is brought to you by Demonic Machines. <laughs> That's right, Steve. And I'm holding one of those spooky demonic machines right now. It might so, not look spooky to you, this is but the, this uh, is frightening. This is the HTR. It's, right. it's a clon, clon cologne. You know what? Spooky, scary serial number it has 806 yeah how did steve are you clairvoyant that is spooky no, i read it i read it like <laughs> 20 seconds ago just read you, like you read 450 on that strap i did not read 450 you saw on the, the pixels through my finger yeah yeah i have x-ray vision <laughs> so anyways demonic machines makes this pedal it's a clon clone it's a clon cologne it's got three switches on there for various extra little things and on the front it's very fun it's a charming pedal it says I mean, it's not like I can just go buy an authentic one for a reasonable price, Bill. That's a message that's to Bill. Funny. Yeah, it's funny. Come on, Bill. Come on, Bill. It's not like we can just go buy a real Klon or even a KTR now. Yeah. The KTRs are stupid expensive now because they have magic diodes or whatever. So huge uh, thanks yep. to Demonic Machines for sponsoring this nonsense. Head on over to demonicmachines.com and check them out. This uh, episode is also brought to you by Big Ear Pedals. That's right, Steve. Got the slice of pie right here. It looks delicious. It does look delicious, doesn't it? It looks like a piece of pizza. Yep. Uh, one of the TikTokers I follow mm -hmm. uh, got one of these. He got the cheese one that comes with the oh. that comes with the magnets. Is he a vegetarian? I don't think. Maybe is I don't that, know. Was that all that was left? I don't know. I don't know why. Maybe maybe he is. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Monster Duck Music. I think is I don't know the who that is. channel. I hope I didn't mess that up. But he he's been talking about his slice of pie. If the TikTokers are talking about it, don't you want to get in on the TikToker talking trend and get yourself a slice of pie, Fuzz? Go hit it bigger. Yeah. See if they have any in stock. Buy them all up. Get a whole pizza and plug them all in at the same time. It's a fuzz. Well, it's, just go get on their get on their list. They're still moving. Get on their list. But you want to be on that list because I'm sure you want to be on that list once once they finish moving. Yeah, it's gonna be right back at it. They're gonna be cranking out pedals. All right. You want to do some housekeeping? Housekeep me, Steve. Uh, housekeeping is part of the show where we don't thank anybody because no one joined us on Patreon. Uh, but if I you if you want to, head on over to patreon.com slash 60 cycle homecast where for as little as $1 a month, uh, you can support the creation of this show. That's all I got. Steve, you're... Let's do an ad. Steve, you just proved that you're a clairvoyant. And I'm having a bit of a clairvoyant experience right now. I, are you sensing what I'm sensing? I'm sensing that there's about five people out there right now who are close to supporting us on Patreon. <laughs> and they're so close. And they're not going to get pushed over by this episode. But I think we're going to start to see them trickle in. I can feel their presence oh out my there. gosh. This feels like, uh, what church was it? That uh, I feel like a TV sidekick. <laughs> there's a, there, yeah, there's a I know you're out there. You want you want your fortune told? You're gonna call in. I know you're gonna call in. It's not tonight, but you're gonna call in soon. There's there's a church that uh, they would have people like on Wednesday, be like, "Hey, I really want to get baptized this Sunday," and so they'd be like, "All right, cool. You have to expedite it. Uh, uh, we can do this. We can do this on Sunday. We're just gonna do a baptism service. But when we ask for baptisms, can you just get up right away and like run to the front?" Mm. Because basically they studied the psychology of this stuff and were like, if other people who want to get baptized see one person get up and is like super stoked about mm. it, then they're going to be like, I want to be excited like, like that guy. Can you do a flip and do the baptismal? Like literally they were like psycho Cannonball. psychologically manipulating right. potential people like baptizes. Steve. Yeah. Do you detect any surprise? 
I no, no surprises. No surprise detected. No surprise detected. <laughs> Churches are often businesses, aren't they, people? And I, I'm saying that as a as a person of faith myself. All right, this was they sent by Max businesses. on Instagram. Oh, I'm glad you got this because I saw this ad. I saw this message, but I didn't get to it. This listing says, "What can I say? It's a scorpion face." <laughs> Very cool, one of a kind. I purchased new back in 2008, 2009. No paperwork on it. Didn't come with any. I believe it's Wilkinson pickups and hardware. No player wear. Got it checked. Put it away. Zero fret wear. Neck is great. Low action. No warpage. Warpage is such a weird wor- right. word. And I really wanted to read it as warpage. I'm like, like rampage, but it's a warpage. Uh, no warpage. And it's straight after 14 years. Solid build. Nice player. Like all my other instruments, stored in a humidity-controlled room and fretboard treated with organic lemon oil. None of that GMO stuff. No disappointments with this piece. No case. And before people get mad, I know things can be organic and GMO. It was just a joke, okay? Mm, mm, Chill out. Mm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to judge this with my artist eye right now. Mm. The claws. They look great. The okay. legs. Solid. Solid-looking legs. The abdomen, it works. The tail and the stinger, it looks awesome. This stinger guitar looks really good to me. <laughs> like it's, it's the right amount of detail and the right amount of simplicity uh-huh. in the design. Where I'm like, this, they did a good job. This isn't, this isn't hurting to look at. Yeah, it's a fully novelty guitar, but it works. And even the way that like. The controls are tucked into the tail and stuff. Yeah. And the legs on on the top bout are hollowed out so there's space in between. And the lower legs are not for structural reasons and electronics, I'm sure. Like, but it all visually works to me. I don't I'm not in love with the headstock. Do you think this is a re- real one of a kind? It's kind of hard to search for No. Sc- it's hard to search for Scorpion. This base. is not a one of a kind. If it was one of a kind, he wouldn't be selling it for 425. This is an AliExpress thing. You think you think that's no, what it is? It's got made in China on the back of the headstock. I know it does. I don't but that's not that's not it's not one of a kind. They they made 50 of these things at least. At least. One of the tuners is crooked. Like this is not a one of a kind. This is a production. Two piece. of the tuners all of the tuners are crooked. <laughs> But I think for what it is, for four hundred and fifty bucks, if you've got a, if you've got a band that this would work in visually, you kind of have to. This is a tough Google man. It just wants to tell me about like Rudy Sarzo. <laughs> yeah, that's a tough. You're yeah. You've got to really have your Google skills on fleek to make make that Google search work. You found the listing. For I found it. one on on a. On that a is the listing. That- you found the listing that we're looking at, but this one says Sunny Scorpion. Yeah, but it's Black on the same. Is, oh, it's on it the is same, same rug. It is the same. I didn't look at the guitar. Oh, you Steve. looked at the rug. I looked <laughs> at the rug. It's the same. Clearly, I'm my my skills are down. You got to work on your rug looking. I know, Steve. I'm not seeing any other ones, man. That one, doesn't one mean of a anything. Kind. One that of, doesn't mean anything. It's one of a kind. It's right there in the title. I I guarantee you, one of a kind. At some point, guitar fetish had a bunch of the bodies with the paint half ground off, you know, <laughs> one claw missing. Cause it broke. I don't think it's going to play like a $450 base. I think you are able to get all kinds of bases that will play much better for 450. Oh yeah. But, but none th- of them will look like scorpion. None of them will look like a scorpion. So I'm going to say bye, bye, bye. Wow. Bye, bye, bye. That's 450. A, go get it. It's a ringing endorsement. Yeah. Should we do mail? Let's do some mail. Do you want to do the boxes or do we want to do the envelopes? Let's do the envelopes. Okay. I, I think last week I failed to do this too. We got a bunch of stuff. I think it was last week's episode uh, from Tulpa Effects. Go check them out. Yeah. I, I didn't say that. Um, I think they're, I got to double check where their website is. I got to um, grab the cyclone. Their website is, I guess you just search for Tulpa Effects or on Instagram at Tulpa Effects, T U L P A F X. Uh, and go check them out. They got a bunch of pedals, fuzzes. They're like both really simple and really cool. So, again, go check that stuff out. This package that I got here, this is from uh, this is from John Fleming. It feels like shirts. 
This is this is shirts, I think. Hopefully I didn't just stab a hole in a shirt. And I'm gonna open this while you do that and see if there's any stickers in here. There's not! Oh, it's a letter. Oh wait, there is. There is. I found the stickers. Here they are. They say Trust Club. It's got a cute little house with a palm tree and a pink balloon. We've got a couple extra stickers, Steve. It says, hi, Ryan and Steve. Thanks for keeping me ever entertained with the podcast and video content I've been watching for a while now and just joined the Patreon. Thank you. Mostly wanted to say thanks for featuring my band Trust Club on the show with the song Unintelligent Behavior and the nice comments you made after it was played. Please see in the envelope a couple of stickers for the Cyclone if it's not too late and for you to add to your personal collections. The art is by a tattoo artist friend of ours, Kells, that I intimately that I initially got done for some shirts. Hope you like. I appreciate you guys. Keep on doing what you're doing and stay grounded. Signed, Matt Good. What in the world is this? Oh my gosh. Whoa. Did we get sports jerseys? So this is also... No, does it say what cool. I think it says? No way. <laughs> no way, dude. That's, that's awesome. That's incredible. Do we know who sent it? Yeah, it's from John Fleming. He's, oh, that's right. He's a Patreon. All that's right, inc- all right, that's Ryan, incredible. Um, let's test your clairvoyant skills. Let what, me what let me this? place this sticker I'm gonna, while I, I warm, I'm, warm I'm, up my psychic abilities. I'm beaming this into... So this is going to test my ability to beam and your ability to receive. It's a print of some kind. Um, on watercolor paper, and it is a picture of I'm getting, I'm getting like a petal, but I'm also getting like a cartoon chicken. That's pretty. That's not really close at all. Not ah, I'm not psychic, guys. All right, you ready? I'm ready. Like an art print of a petal, and there's like a chicken no. involved somehow. There's not a this chicken. This is in August, 1987. Cracked magazine. What? No way. Also, some Fender. What is this? Tune any. Tune any E on your guitar. Keychain guitar tuner from Fender. Oh, wow. I don't know. What is that? How does this work? Plug in a guitar cable. So it's got, it's like a little, oh, there's a plug here on the end. That's a really cool old Fender tuner that you can put on your keychain. Oh, so you, oh, I see. This is all, you plug in your cable and then it, you can only tune your E string. That's actually really interesting. And here's a Weird. couple, here's a couple more shirts. And it gives you a map of where all the E's are on your fretboard. Wild, a, and oh my gosh. A they, wild stallion shirt. He sent so much. And a... <laughs> I support the current. <laughs> I support the current thing. Oh, I should have shown it to the camera instead of to you. This is amazing. Thank this you. This is cool. Thank you. You know, we have someone in I'm our. I'm gonna wear this next episode. This when, jersey. When we talked about Cracked, we found out that we have someone in the in the audience who actually works at Cracked right now. Right now, they work for Cracked, and Cracked definitely still exists as a website that makes content and stuff like that, or at least like reshare. I don't know. Are they making content? I don't know. I used to have. They make some videos. There's a Mad Ball on there. I used to have a Mad Ball. What's and a I, Mad Ball? It was a to- Steve. That's the age difference oh, between you it. and me. Like, I see it. That you're. I've that, seen those. I didn't know what they were called. The fact that you don't spend most of your day remembering Mad Balls just shows the difference in our age. I'm gonna. Mad Balls sounds like a disease that I don't want. I'm going to open this up and read it. It's got a Night Court spoof in there. All right. It's got Freddy Krueger on there. It's got Michael J. Fox as a werewolf. I'm Yeah, I'm into it's, this. It's got Bill Cosby as Frankenstein. <laughs> as is that who that monster. is? Yeah. Oh, you're right. It says Cosby monster at the top. Yeah. That's aged interesting. <laughs> Cosby monster. <laughs> Are you ready to hit this next ad? I sure am, Steve. This is the the gent stick, right? Gent stick for all the gentlemen out there. I saw says, someone saying the other day Andrew Wall. that gent isn't a de jo- jo- genre. <laughs> isn't a de genre? Yeah. Oh, you know, did you have any what's new? Or were we Has anyone mail? made any de gent de giorno jokes? Have you, have, did you have any what's new? Yeah, we can talk about I, that after this ad. 
Okay. Yeah, we did mail. Let's do the ad. Then we'll talk about right. what's new. All and right. then we'll do this sponsor. This was my pandemic project, but I only really, I don't really play nine string guitars anymore. So here it is up for sale. Overall, it's in good shape apart from some minor scrapes and dents around the body. The fretboard shows cracks, but they've been there for years and are stable now. No unusual fret buzzing action at 1.2 millimeter on high strings. Everything is in the pictures. Uh, hoping to sell for a low price here rather than shipping to a larger market. Not really interested in trades or uh, other than other modern style guitars, maybe plus or minus cash if needed. I'll try to keep the list of mods as concise as possible, but there are a lot of crazy things going on. So feel free to shoot a message. Um, I don't know if it's that crazy, but sure. Oh, it's Buck Wild, Steve. You wouldn't believe what he did. Yeah. Q tuner pickups looks cool. Neodymium magnets. They do look cool. Sounding. Goto Stealth tuners. Oh, that's why they're replacement tuners. They're the they're, they're tiny Goto Stealth tuners. Stealth tuners. I uh, haven't seen those these before. These are expensive and hard to find, but no more neck dive. Custom tortoiseshell oh. pit guard to hold all these crazy electronics. Changing the tuners solved the neck dive on this guitar? Yes. Uh, <laughs> Five-way super switch. Basically a typical three-way plus out of phase and half out of phase modes. Arcade button kill switch. Switchable active My passive man. electronics. I love the arcade Red button. knob is passive volume tone. Black knob is active volume three band in gain. So good. That is pretty over the top. Base cut switch for passive mode, adjustable inside cavity with trim pot. Of course, a bypass switch that skips everything but the pickup selector and kill switch. It has old strings on it, but I'll bundle a new sealed set of Ernie Ball 9 to 105. Good God. <laughs> strings with the guitar. Sorry, no case with this one. Good luck finding one that's not a bass case. No kidding. Um, I think... These pictures aren't the highest resolution, but there's definitely enough pixels to see the wines on the lowest string because it's a massive string. <laughs> no, no, it, it absolutely is. And so that, that's actually what I'm very amu uh, I um, amused by is, um, so I'm, I'm trying to... I love that this guitar has way more knobs than most guitars would ever need. And it still has more strings than knobs. <laughs> what, the hell what the hell do you tune this to? Uh, do you have any idea? Drop G? Is it just like, like I legit have no drop F I, sharp? I bet. I, I bet legit, it's drop F sharp. I legit have no idea. The reason I was laughing about the string gauges is because it's a nine to one Oh five, which means the guitar set is like an, is extra light strings starting at nine. Like that uh -huh. makes me think of extra lights, but then a one Oh five, whatever that lowest string is, that's a heavy bass string. So it's got a set of, of like light strings and a set of heavy bass strings. Okay. So Hit me. the lowest string is a C sharp, okay. which is kind of wild. I didn't, I didn't think it would be that high. I thought it would have gone all the way down through to F sharp. Do you think that's lower. high or low? I It's higher you, than I thought it was going to be. Okay. The, the, the string, the next string down is an F sharp, but it's going to be a higher octave F sharp than I was imagining. Uh, then it's a B. That's your standard seven string or baritone. And then it's your normal E, A, D, G, B, E. But like drop C sharp isn't that uncommon for even like I could do that on my baritone. So it's an, it's an octave lower than that. Okay. So if I draw my baritone to C sharp, it's a full octave lower than that. Yeah. This is drop C sharp on a bass. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I know people like these guitars and I know people play these guitars and it's a, it's a whole thing, but part of like going back to the topic, like th this is a highly modified one, it, but it's a production model. I've been as it sold what for like a thousand bucks, like nine, 900, 800 bucks or something like that. A yeah. hundred bucks a string. Um, that's how you gauge guitars. That's how you sell them by pound and by strings. Um, because this is production level and, you know, with the, like, you know, your Rondo musics and stuff that sell all the al agiles that are, you yeah. have crazy, crazy string accounts and whatnot. Um, are these going to stay in the market? Are these, are, is this a trend bubble that's about to burst or going to burst eventually where it's like people keep buying these things and then one day they're going to be like, I was curious, but let's get realistic. I don't really play that thing. 
And I kind of just, uh, I kind of just play the lower string, so I could just drop a, a regular guitar, you know. Or like, let's be like, this is just me being antisocial. I just need to join a band and have there be another guitarist in there to play those strings. I, I maybe I'm completely out of touch. Maybe this is me being a boomer right now. Um, I, d- I don't. Are people actually playing these things? <laughs> it's what I want to know. Like I know people I'm, are playing I'm them, but are, are people answer. are people forming bands around them? You know, or is it is it a curiosity? Is it a novelty? Because I don't I, know, man. The fretboard is so wide. Like, I think it just depends. I think it just depends it on whether. It always depends, Steve. It just depends on whether or not you suck a guitar. I do. I made a whole video I about know. it. <laughs> um, I was trying to find. Oh, I guess they have the. That's the six string version. This is a weird little piece of merch. I keep looking at it. Like I didn't I never knew these existed. Where yeah. did this come from? Like what Does era? It say? I want to know the, the year. Oh, it's like the 90s. 2004? Wow. This was a product in 2004? I I guess I'm not surprised. <laughs> that feels like, you know, we're that feels like it was perpetually 10 years ago ago. That was the same way that people think the nineties were still 10 years ago. All right. I, I, I don't know. I don't have anything else to say about this guitar. He's up charging for it. It's the P he's charging more than stock value based on his upgrades. I don't know, man. You, if you love nine strings, it's a lot, it's a lot of work and it's a, but it's, you know, it like, looks clean. He couldn't decide between, Oh, I want to make a cool guitar or I want to make, like a fully functional guitar or a fully functional bass, so he just right. threw the whole kitchen sink at this thing. Yeah, might as well do it. Like, might as well have a double neck, right? Right. It should be a double neck. It should be a three string bass, six uh, and five play, string have guitar. Have you ever played a nine string? I don't even think I played an eight string. Oh, this is a nine string. I've been thinking of it as an eight string. It's a nine string. Yeah. I've never played a nine string. I think I picked up an eight string once and it's just like, what do I even do? <laughs> what do I, like, I already feel lost on seven strings. Yeah. Like, what do you even do with a nine string? It's not like it's a 12 string where they're doubled up, you know, like, I mean, you probably just have to hit this thing with a lot of two handed. Yeah. So let's talk about what's new. Well, let's do a sponsor spot. Oh, do a sponsor spot. Okay. Yeah, uh, this sure. episode is brought to you by Chase Buzz Audio. Do you guys know that? Right. By Chase Bus Audio? They have an, uh, a newer thing. Uh, they have the generation loss. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's how. Uh, so you can go check that out. And you might want to snag that up because before it turns out like the Bliss Factory. I don't know. They might be planning on making I the generation loss forever. I think they're planning on making it forever. But you never know what's going to happen. It might end up like the Bliss Factory. There's only so many. If you either get them or you don't, you know? So go check out a generation loss. See if it's something that you want. And if it is, I strongly recommend asking Santa Claus for one. It's July. Mm-hmm. It's Christmas and July season. You it's know, not, it's, dude, it's August 3rd. It's August now. Damn it. August 3rd. We're late. July. We're late. You've, you, you, missed Christmas, you missed Christmas in July. You need to catch up. Write a letter to Santa for Christmas in August. Your letter you want says, a generation loss. Dear Santa, www.chaseplusaudio.com. Yes. Pick one. Dear Santa, pick one. <laughs> uh, this episode is also brought to you by String Joy. That's right. I was reaching for something. I don't have anything yet because I need to put in the order for the strings that put I want. Put in your freaking order, man. <sighs> Do you want to request anything, Steve? I don't. I probably should. You probably should. Figure out what gauge you want, and that'll push me into putting in my order. Okay. And then we'll get some String Joy strings in our hands so we can do proper sponsorships where we actually have the product in hand. But we... I've already used string joy strings. Yeah, we, know, they were we know they're great. You know, they're great. They're making them in Nashville. They're winding them with machines that they programmed. They, you know, they're, they're, they're making custom yeah. sets. If you want, uh, if you get three, it's free shipping. If you get six, they waive this sh- is, I don't know. There's a discount. But there's a discount, remember, free shipping and a discount. That's right. Yeah. And they're not as expensive as you'd think they would be. Steve, how much do you think you would, you would have to pay for a string joy string set? All custom 
gauges across the entire fretboard. What do you think you have to oh, pay wow, for? Oh, wow, I don't know. You know at made, least, made at in least $20 a pack. Nashville, Tennessee, Steve. At made least, in Nashville, at Tennessee. At least $20 a they're pack. They're fresh. You can smell that they're fresh. And $20 a pack, you think? $20 a pack. Well, pack. Steve, when I looked at the website, I was surprised because it seemed like it like they start out at like eleven fifty, oh, and then wow. they tap out at like 15 depending if you're doing something crazy. Yeah. So they're not that ridiculous, guys. It's like normal string prices. It's not even that they're not that ridiculous. They're just normal string prices. <laughs> so go check out String Joy and to thank them for sponsoring the content that you love. So what's new, man? I went to a concert last night. Oh yeah, yeah. I uh, uh, I got hit up by uh, by Rick Wilkinson from Austin Ribbon Mics. Mm-hmm. Uh, he makes the the Austin. Uh, yeah, that thing back there, that reverb. This, the summer reverb here, which is a kickable, crashable digital reverb. Uh, he sells them as kits, and he sells microphone kits, and he sells uh, those hot holder things, were, which are awesome. But he hit me up, and he's like, hey, you want to come to a surf show with me uh, on Tuesday? And uh, I'm going to bring along Clint uh, Beachwood. I was like, yes, I do want to do that. So Clint Beachwood is a... a uh, a surf music radio host. Oh, okay. Like he's got an internet radio thing and it's as a pod, as a podcast as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the Clint Beachwood back to the beach. I think it's called, I feel bad. <laughs> I think it's just called Clint Beachwood, but, um, we all went to a surf show together. We went and saw surfer Joe who like to name drop another company. Surfer Joe uh, Lorenzo from that band mm-hmm. is uh, associated with, uh, with surfy bear. Oh, okay. Uh, he's from Italy and he tours around playing surf music. Oh, and, cool! And local surf band, uh, the Termaliners were there, and they played. And there was it was what it was is it was a pre party for Tiki Oasis, which is this weekend. Which is this weekend. So As there was the weekend before this episode, right? Comes right. Out. Uh, so there there was a lot of like Tiki people there and stuff oh, like cool. that. It was a really good time, and it was at Tio Leo's. Yeah. Have you ever been to that Tia Leo's? I've never been there, but I, I know they have a stage outside. I've driven by there. They have a stage see, inside. Oh, they have a stage inside too. And out, I, I, yesterday was an outside thing. Uh-huh. But uh, if you're outside San Diego or Southern California, you probably are not familiar with Tia Leo's. Are they local chain? I know there's at least two of them. I think they were Southern California only. Oh, okay. I might be wrong. But it was a bit nostalgic for me because there used to be a TLEOs here in Mira Mesa. Oh, wow. And it was like my parents spot when I was a kid, right. like right. we're going to go out for a nice dinner. We're going to go to TLEOs. And it's like, you're, it's your very standard, like eighties version of Tex-Mex sit down restaurant right. sort of thing. And they haven't changed at all. It's a time capsule, Steve. No, their, their signs all still look like the old school, like seventies car wash signs. The in, the interior of this Tia Leo's down off of Moreno, mm-hmm. um, I'm pretty sure it the last time it was, it was remodeled, like there were new episodes of Golden Girls on TV. <laughs> like that is the vibe. That oh, is the man. vibe. Like the, oh, the, the, the block glass walls and things like that. Uh, like that very specific color of eucalyptus sea foam. You know, mm-hmm. and just the furniture and everything. And the, the bar area is it's a dark bar with a stage and stuff. It's like, whatever. But it is funny to look at it and be like, they're still serving the same food and they still have the same furniture. And they're, they've been making it work for 30-something years now. <laughs> hey, if, the, if it works, it works. <laughs> but I, I like, nostalgia ordered. Like, I'm going to get a margarita. I was hoping it would be one of the big bowl ones, but it wasn't. But it was oh. still totally like the toxic green, yeah. like sugar yeah. juice sort of margarita. And uh, I got like one of the carne asada plates, and I was like, "This is straight out of 1987." Like this, <laughs> like <laughs> it was still, it was good, it was uh-huh. good, but it's like Mexican food as it's presented to, uh, presented through restaurants now has has changed a lot right. since then. Like there was a cheese enchilada on the plate and stuff like that. It was, it was, and it was delicious. It was delicious. And the salsa that they served, it was chips and salsa on the table. And it was like paste picante style. Oh my salsa. gosh. No, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jeez. So that was my light, my night uh, yesterday. Cool. You got anything new? I learned this week that calling eighties rock and metal hair metal is apparently very offensive to people who were teenagers. <sighs> they need to get time. over it. No, they need to get over it. So I would like to apologize for not being sensitive. So I saw that comment and I saw someone said, we're supposed to, to call it, we're supposed to call it glam metal. But when I, 
I guess that's correct. But I, like, did it? Is that what it said? I don't remember. I responded to it. And I was like, because the whole complaint was that we are too woke on the show, but also we need to be less offensive to hair metal. Uh, to hair metal. Because, you know... That's a common term. I mean, get, tell me in the comments if I'm wrong. If I'm being it's terribly insulting. I just, I just thought it was funny. But because, that was like the whole thing. Because, like all the bands were it's like... It, like they, the, all had, they all had long hair. The hair was a common theme, guys. Like it's not a... It's not like, oh, let's reduce it to a haircut. Honestly... No, like it was, it was a genre that featured a haircut. Honestly, it feels a little... Uh, it feels a little like, ac- but I don't know what's the what's the opposite of like an anachronism. Anachronism is when you have a piece of modern technology, in like, gladiator. Right, right. Um. Uh. But what is it called when you look back at something and you like? I just, try to uh, try to like. I don't know. It's weird. But I yeah, I just, I just I'm make, yeah. It, like, whatever. I guess you could call it glam metal. But it's not all glam. But when you say glam, I always assume the next word is going to be be rock, and it's definitely not glam rock. Well, I always because when I think of glam rock, rock I'm thinking, uh, you know, David Bowie, you yeah. know, and, and and acts like that. You know, I could see calling like Cinderella glam metal, but then I wouldn't think of like, like uh, maybe like Motley Crue. That's as, who I had in my head as as, what, yeah. gl- as being glam. But I don't know. But it was all about went, Ryan. the leather and spandex Ryan, and, and big hair and stuff. You weren't there, so you can't know. You've offended all people who listen to hair metal. If I did, I'm sorry. But all I'm right, probably this. not going to stop calling it hair metal because that's what I've always heard it called by people who enjoy it. And I enjoy it as well. I enjoy hair metal or glam metal, whatever you want to call it. Like, uh, hair metal was just what it's always been called. This last ad was sent by Greg. Thanks, Greg. This is a custom craft. Uh, thing that is what in tar nation is it like nailed to a tree <laughs> it might as well be it's missing some parts and by parts i mean the fretboard so that is that's the trust rod that you're seeing there uh these actually have collectability to them obviously in better condition than this uh, i was seeing them on uh on reverb for a thousand up to i think i saw one for 1700 steve I might be misremembering that, but I saw they were going a lot higher than I thought they would. Um, It looks like it's got some cool parts on it, but this one's toast. Yeah. Someone painted it purple. That definitely was an original color, but they did a good job of keeping some key elements. Like it still has the headstock badge, which is a really cool badge, by the way. Um, It still has the, the trim and bridge. I don't see a wiggle stick, but I'm assuming you could retrofit a jag war wiggle stick into that the bridge is actually pretty intact no it looks it's a hybrid between a rickenbacker and a <coughs> jaguar bridge yeah it's like missing what looks like should be a mute a, a, a part that you could add on as a mute i don't know about a mute but there's probably a cover that went over that okay oh you think it's just a cover there's not, a chip a in one of the knobs I mean, the whole thing looks filthy. I, we're going over little details. Uh, you know, the, the pick guard has like what looks like water damage. Yeah. Uh, the pickups look clean. <coughs> Excuse but me. Yeah. I'm looking at this thing. When I first saw it, I was like, oh, that's trash. That's over at some sort of like Tysco style thing that mm-hmm. was worth, you know, 500 in best condition and $50 and worse. Um, they want 150 for it. If you can. There's collectability. There is a used market for these in good condition, which means there's people looking for parts. And you might have well over two hundred and fifty dollars yeah. worth of I parts. I wonder here. if this, if the trust, I mean, the trust rod looks like it's in pretty bad shape, but I wonder if it's actually frozen. I think it, the neck is just done. You think it's just done? Neck is over. You don't think you could like buy a no, modern this, fretboard and slap it on there? You could pay someone to do it, uh, but you, but you couldn't do it. No, the, like. I could not. You personally. No, personally, like <laughs> I'm willing to bet that very few people in our audience are up to that particular task, Steve. It's just like you paste it, Yeah, just glue put it on. Paste just on glue, there, yeah, put on put some rubber bands and just stick hold it, it on. on there, get yeah. a couple C clamps, you're done. It's done. It's over. Call it's it finished. Day, yeah. Piece of cake. Yeah, and and it, you'll be able to find a ready to go fretboard just mm-hmm. made for mm-hmm. whatever scale this guitar happens to be, and it's just gonna work out the scale just length and everything. Slap a strap fretboard on it. Yeah, yeah. It, honestly, like 
Here's what I'm proposing. You get this. You, the neck is over. Mm-hmm. It's just over. You might be able to sell the neck by itself to, to someone who's a very serious collector. It's only got three tuners on there. But you're going to sell that headstock emblem mm-hmm. because it's it's a, an applied, screwed-on big piece of, of pick guard material really? with like a really cool crest on it. I, didn't so, re- I don't think I realized it was screwed on. You can pull that off and the pick guard and sell them together or sell them, you know, piece amount. Yeah. Yeah. To collectors who are probably missing because it's strangely intact and you wouldn't expect this headstock graphic to be intact. It's actually nailed on. No, it's it's pinned on, nailed on, uh, but it's intact and someone will want that. Same thing with the pick guard. The pick guard is in rougher condition, but it's still there. Uh, the pickups Totally sellable. They're humbucker size, but you know those have to be single coils. It looks like you're missing one pickup ring, but that's probably okay. But you're selling the pickups. Uh, switches, probably not. The knobs, yeah. three of those knobs you can sell. One of them is chipped. You just throw that in and say you got a chip knob in yeah. the set. Uh, the bridge and the trim, clean it up, get some of that rust knocked back, and you're going to be able to sell that as well. People pay. Like I, I've been shopping around for vintage trims for that guild. Mm-hmm. Because I've been thinking about going that direction with it. I thought it. you were just going to drop like a... I might. A I, I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. It. But um, people pay like 150 200 bucks for all sorts of weird, funky like trims you'd never expect yeah. to sell for that much. This is no exception. Someone would pay, I bet, over 150 for this. So you could buy this, sell the bridge and trim outfit there, and be dead even. And then everything else that you sell is just gravy or you keep parts of it. And then if you want to, you keep that body if you want and you slam a strat neck on there. <laughs> you slam a Telcaster neck. You you hack in some other like bridge hardware and it's just a rat rod sort of thing. Or you might be able to sell that body. You might just be able to sell I the body. I think if you took off the neck, you could, yeah, you could probably very easily sell the whole body. I bet there's 150 to at least... I think there's at least $150 of flip potential here. Mm. Money in your pocket, parting this out. There might be as much as $250. Interesting. If you're smart about it. Well, let, maybe Greg will take you up on that. What do you mean? Because it's from Greg sent this ad. So maybe he'll try to buy it and, and do that. And then oh, I see. Back. I thought you were going to say he was going to go buy it so that I could flip it. No, no, no. Okay, no. No, the, I, I don't have time. No. <laughs> All right, you want to tell us about the song, Steve? Yeah, this song was sent by Sal. He says, hey, guys, love the podcast. Thanks, Here's a song that you may like to play at the end of the show. It's my band called 100,000 Thousand Leagues Under My Nutsack. <laughs> 100,000 Thousand? That's what it says. 1,000, 100,000. No, 100,000 Thousand. Okay. 100, 000, thousand Leagues Under My Nutsack. The song is The Land of Ziggity Boo. Today I did a dropped today I dropped today I did dropped a few stickers in the mail for that guitar too. Anyway, oh, so that's probably where you saw that is somewhere on that uh guitar back there is a sticker from, ah. from Sal. Uh in the mail for that guitar too. Anyway, I hope you like the song. Also, there's a video of the song on YouTube. Check it out. Uh I'm just going to play it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, step in closer and witness one of the marvels of the age. And this handy item is backed with my own personal guarantee. If you are not completely satisfied, just bring it back to old Bargain Barney and I'll be happy to refund your money. In the 
Say it a couple more times. Land of Ziggity Boo. Oh, okay, it's done. <laughs> it's a beautiful song. I don't know what it was about. Oh, it's about the land of Ziggity Boo. Yeah, that's right. I think I, 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 that was what I took away from it. So I, it's, it's, I, I felt like I was missing the point, and then I remembered. Oh yeah, land of Ziggity Boo. So it's that's funny. What it's is last week, last week's episode, we talked about revival genres, and I the revival genre that I said I want to come back was kind of like that. Uh, Early night, early mid nineties, like adult alternative, uh-huh. and that's what this song was. Like I got like right. real big like REM vibes off of this. Not REM, but totally would have been played. I think on the, a, like a college station I playing the like, same. I think the the vo- it's because of that stuff. like vocal layering is a right. very like REM thing to do. No, that that's the song that would totally end up in you know some sort of nineties teen comedy. Yeah, Polly Shore sort of like montage music. Sort of thing. It's very cool. Yeah, it's great. All right. Bye, everyone. Stay grounded. <laughs>